What's up, fam? Welcome back to Off the Reservation, a show that is more afraid of you than you are of it. I'm your number one wizard, Mal. <laughs> I'm L, and I'm the son of Picasso. And today we have with us a very special guest, Jane Myers, uh, here with us, and obviously. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we are very excited to have you on our uh, show t- this week. So thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, and so. Uh, uh, you know, I looked up your information, look, looked up your IMBD and everything. And uh, so obviously, Jane Maya, she's uh, a Comanche Blackfeet, uh, Native American. Um, from the venue that we know you, we've grown up going to art shows and everything. Uh, you, you know, obviously are an artist and uh, we found out that now you're a producer. And then um, but you've uh, done cultural advising as well as like linguistic advising on on different shows um can you can you i guess tell us a little bit about how how you got into these kinds of things or uh... sure i have like a very complex background uh because i did uh as you know i'm a fine artist as you just mentioned but uh also i work for museums i've worked Mm -hmm. uh on um i guess on exhibits my first one was uh with the national museum of the american indian smithsonian uh, identity by design the dress exhibit yeah so i was a part of that and i was one of the uh, early community curators that they had but i've also worked with our comanche nation museum i was on our board for six years and i recently because my film career was taking off i resigned from the museum of indian arts and culture where i worked for eight years and that's in santa fe so i have this like i can draw like for my job, I think I can draw from my unique experience, whether it's hands-on being mm-hmm. an artist and being able to make things, yeah. or whether it's actually um, you know research that I've seen and I've made uh, I've made really good use uh, of my museum mm-hmm. uh, time because I've done a lot of uh, research and I would go down and look at uh, you know like in my on my lunch break I'd you know make an appointment and go down there and look at collections and everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know I think I've had a really good. Uh, like diverse background you know which also includes language that's awesome what i've always loved about your fine artwork is your attention to traditional like that it that like my daughter has a pair of your earrings and like they're her favorite things to wear when she wears her traditional outfit so i mean it's just it's cool because you see it and it's like you could see pictures of my grandma wearing the exact same Mm -hmm. earrings you know what i mean and so you know it's cool to see that i think that's where that um you know, where the research comes in, but mm-hmm. also living traditionally. I was raised by my grandparents, mm-hmm. so I wasn't raised actually by my parents. I lived with my uh, grandparents in Lot, in Oklahoma. Oh, so, yeah. um, you know, I grew up, it, it was kind of, this came out in, a, in an interview not too long ago um, because someone was asking me where I got our my knowledge, and a lot of it's from story, but, you know, for our things, mm-hmm. we create them ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my grandmother taught me early how to make moccasins because we made our own moccasins, mm-hmm. and she was from... Um, she was Blackfeet, Grovan, and, and Nakota from Montana. So she uh, worked with dentelium and all of these mm-hmm. things that are indigenous to them. Yeah. So, like, when I came into the fine art world, I was able to, I think I was one of the first people that started, like, using elk teeth in their artwork yeah. as well as using dentelium. Now everybody mm-hmm. does dentelium <laughs> earrings, but it, think back when's the first time that you saw it at an yeah. art yeah. show and that people mm-hmm. were selling it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I did a horse mask with dentelium and, mm-hmm. you know, just... Um, trying to just push those limits but yet remain traditional yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what i've always enjoyed about your work is that it it is contemporary but also with those traditional aspects it's it's just beautiful so oh thank you people are like oh thank you thank you i appreciate that because i try to think out of the box i know sometimes i'm a bit out there but uh you know i think Mm -hmm. it's i think it's good to experiment and you know to experiment with our traditional items Mm -hmm. that's awesome uh and so uh i guess um i guess let's uh, let's go into maybe how how you got into the the producer side of of um of, of producing and, and maybe your linguistic so bringing that into like do you remember what uh the first uh movie you had done that was 
um, that you had advised on? I always like using uh, language, you know, as, you know, something because we don't really see a lot of native language. And, of course, the first time it broke out was in Dances with Wolves, and that mm-hmm. was like an 80, like or in the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, my God, why, haven't any, why hasn't anybody done this? Because yeah. we spoke to each other. We had our own languages. We had yeah. sign language, you know, but yet you have the Indians, and we're just always there quiet, not yeah. saying anything yeah. and <laughs> speaking broken English, which is an, entirely wrong because in, if you look back in history, Comanche spoke like five to seven languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then they also spoke uh, sign language when they couldn't, uh, you know, make a connection or and they used a trade sign language. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. trade sign language from the Comanches was actually what ASL, uh, the American Sign Language, yeah. was derived from that early trade really? language. Wow. Yes. Wow. So like people, like if you don't, study and if you don't you know study the origins of things then you don't know this but when people find that out mm-hmm. they're like blown away yeah. when i was a kid like because for those of you that know that i'm a traditional artist as well and i would always refer back to my dad because he saw that old way of life and i would always ask him like how did you know being multi-tribal on the plains how did these people talk and he would always talk about sign language sign language was a huge part of native culture just yeah. you know those ideas of symbolism and that's how we communicated. And that's one thing that's always overlooked because of, you know, colonization is that's that's a huge part of our, our culture. And that was really cool to see and pray was just the idea of that sign language, you know, being represented in that space. So that was right. Really cool. We did um, because it is um, action and it is uh, sci fi. Right. So mm-hmm. you have a little wiggle room. Yeah. So, you know, people are saying, well, it's not exactly, you know, how do you know it? <laughs> you know, the 1700s, it wasn't this or it wasn't. I said, you don't know that. Yeah. First yeah. of all, yeah. uh-huh. because we don't have any pictures yeah. of our yeah. things from the 1700s. Yeah. And I've studied garments uh, from, you know, way back and they don't really have any like really good existing things mm-hmm. from the 1700s. Yeah. So that gives us the wiggle room as long as we still use like uh, we used all the earth colors because mm-hmm. what we tried to depict was a band of Comanches, not a whole tribe, but yeah. a band that was hunting mm-hmm. way up north because they got caught following the buffalo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were tracking the buffalo and they were trying to kill buffalo to stock up with food and mm-hmm. um, everything, you know, sinew, um, everything that we use, you know, on the buffalo, mm-hmm. the hide, you know, the buffalo robe. So they were following, they were hoping to find, you know, the herd of buffalo to stock up before winter. And then they run into what? A predator. Yeah. So, you know, so, well, you know, more than one predator. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everybody's a predator. Yeah. It, it's just kind of, it's kind of nice because what we wanted to depict in this film was actually, you know, let's see what, um, you know, like let's make the non-native people really look like the predators, right? Because yeah. they, I mean, everybody's motive, motivated by a different thing. Mm-hmm. You know, the Comanches are motivated by survival because they're following the buffalo. They need this meat to make jerky or like da'o is what we call our dried meat yeah. in our mm-hmm. language. And so they're, you know, they're wanting to do all of this. But then the French are coming up from the, actually they came up from the Louisiana Purchase mm-hmm. in that time period. Yeah. So they were trying to go north to see, you know, what what is up here? What, you know, what treasures could we have? And so they're just like pillaging and, you know, <laughs> yeah. killing as many things and yeah. like, you know, packing up hides and doing whatever, you know. So, um, you know, so it just really shows that big difference in cultures. Yeah. And also, you know, a difference in survival and uh, what people hold as sacred. And also, like for Comanches, you know, uh, actually the director and the writer, uh, the director co-wrote this. So when mm-hmm. they were uh, do, uh, really putting together this story in the beginning, they looked, they just Googled, who's the most fierce native tribe? And Comanches came up. <laughs> yeah. Then they yeah. Googled, who were the deadliest warriors? Comanches came up, you know, and native warriors. So then they were like, okay, we're going to make this Comanche, you know, just because yeah. it was a broad search. Yeah. But uh, then when they pulled me on and uh, I came on as a producer, it really kind of like opened their eyes to a lot of things because yeah. every day it was kind of like a history lesson. It was yeah. like, no, yeah. this is what, you know, this. And I mean, then, then um, like you said, the sign language, mm-hmm. we actually developed a sign language for our band of Comanches that you saw there. So you mm-hmm. saw the the uh, warriors could talk mm-hmm. together. So that was on, it was derived from Comanche sign language and tactical sign language. Yeah. So they cool. were able to like uh, go through the woods and talk to each other without having to say anything. That is so yeah. cool. So, That's I mean, awesome. and it really pulled uh, all of the actors deeper into their characters too, because yeah. they, they were like stronger. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're a warrior because I can do something you can't do. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. can talk and we can, you know, yeah. and, you know, talk about going to see who you're going to kill and, you know, what do you see and all. I mean, so that was kind of a, a really cool 
cool part of it. And to me, it was just, it was fun. It was like, yeah. I got to play in my culture for yeah. six and a half months. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I loved it every day getting up you and know, going to I, work. I think it's cool. Like, I grew up and I was like an 80s kid. So I remember when the first Predator dropped, right? And like, that was my favorite character was the native, right? And like, right. they're hunting around the jungle. And like, I was just like, it was just cool that, you know, they chose to expand in that direction. You know what I mean? And yes. so it was neat to see. Well, Dan Trachtenberg is brilliant. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you looked him up, but he, uh, when he interviewed me, he was uh, in Toronto filming the pilot for the boys. But mm-hmm. he also did 10 Cloverfield Lane. He's yeah. done stuff yeah. for Black mm-hmm. Mirror. I mean, he's just like, he, he's really great about thinking outside of the box. But also he's great about thinking about cultures and showing people in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up on those films. I was a young woman, a young woman <laughs> uh, back then when those uh, those films came out. And that was my first, you know, introduction into action adventure yeah. and into sci-fi. Yeah. Because growing up in Lawton, Oklahoma, we played out by the creek and I would play with my cousins. <laughs> and, you know, I was the only I was the Nadu of that time. I was the only I was the only girl with, you know, four guy cousins. And we take our little twenty uh, twos and you know take our bows and arrows and we'd go down to the creek for the yeah, whole day. Yeah. You know we'd hunt frogs and whatever squirrels. So that was kind of that was kind of cool. So like when uh, he was like, "Well, you know, you're gonna have to be outside," and I'm like, "Okay, that's fine." <laughs> you're like, "This is taking it back." <laughs> yeah. So I was like, "I can totally do this." <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we're gonna take a quick break, and we've got a lot more questions. Uh, we've kind of di- dived into it just a little bit yeah. with Prey, but we've got a lot more questions for you. So. Uh, We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're back here with uh, Jay Myers and our special guest this week. And, uh, you know, as we've already alluded, uh, she has done some work on the movie Prey. And so, uh, yeah, we just want to jump back into the conversation. Uh, so I guess uh, you know I go go back to my earlier question is yes. like how, how <laughs> before I derailed us sorry <laughs> sorry uh, what, what was the you know your your origins of becoming a producer and uh, sure. I mean you were just telling I us knew a that bit. I always wanted to be a producer um, I've worked in different capacities where I've like produced events mm-hmm. you know or produced art shows mm-hmm. or produced you know yeah. a, a multitude of things so I think that was kind of in my blood. Uh, but I started in 2006 when I worked with Mel Gibson as a, um, a publicist. And mm-hmm. so I, in Oklahoma, I was living in Oklahoma then, so I had um, a company that uh, did public relations, Native, Native American Community and Tribal Public Relations, oh, cool. which was at that time new. Hardly anybody had that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he called me out of the blue one day to hire me to do um, – uh, the native engagement. Actually, there was never, now there, it's called native community engagement. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. know if I can be credited with inventing that, but <laughs> uh, back then nobody did native community inv- engagement when mm-hmm. they were doing uh, plans of showing films. So yeah. uh, I worked with uh, Disney at the time because oh, that's wow. who purchased Apocalypto. Yeah. And so um, I did, I worked with Disney to plan a native uh, community engagement throughout uh, the U.S., Wow. So, wow. That, so that was kind that of a cool. that, that was like a so cool, cool job at yeah. the time. Yeah. So then just seeing that and seeing like the inner workings and it was kind of a way to let me take a look at uh, the business to mm-hmm. figure out what I really wanted to do. So I started yeah. out in publicity, mm-hmm. which was great because I worked on yours. God, I'm always hitting this. <laughs> I'm just, I have to keep my hands. But no, remember when? Uh, so I worked on the publicity for uh, the Lone Ranger. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah. Lone Ranger feels like forever ago. Because being a publicist and <laughs> yeah. a native publicist, I was at the time one of, I don't know of how many, but very few. So like yeah. once you're on the Disney radar and they have uh, films coming out, then and then of course it was Comanche content. Yeah. So yeah. it was easy for me to do because that's my tribe. Mm-hmm. I'm enrolled in the Comanches. So I just called them up and we're like, hey, we want to come and do this. And we're like, oh, great. We'll support that. So, you know, it was kind yeah. of an easy thing. Which is, which is exciting because I mean like a, me, I'm I'm Kiowa and and Navajo, and like being able to to portray I don't know Native Americans that were more specific to to my tribe, um, you know being Kiowas and and Comanches being so close and everything, uh, being Plains, um, you know being able to have like that foreground knowledge of, you know this is the way my leggings are supposed to look and this is the, whereas like, 
being in New Mexico, that being filmed in New Mexico, um, you have them sourcing, you know, actors and, and background who are Pueblo, who have a completely different dress and, you know, working on movies that your your creative team is Euro-American and them having the understanding of like, oh, I just Google thing, Google search everything. And then for them, like you had said earlier, how they Googled who was the fiercest warriors. It's, it's a lot of that like, hey, let's go ahead and Google search everything, all our information. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to, um, you know, a, a outfit fitting and I see the same images of like a uh, um, Geronimo and uh, Chief uh, Manuelito and and this you know all mixed into the same movie like a pan Indian. Yeah, it's like no, we're yeah. not pan Indian. We're yeah. different tribes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so to have somebody who's who's specifically Native American who has the background that you have uh, is like a super special thing. Like you're you're like a unicorn in this whole situation. I think it's cool because like we as natives, like we can see that we see that on film and we see the authenticity in it. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it's not like the old Hollywood where you see teepees in Monument Valley. Right. Like (laughs) We know like that's not real. The searchers. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've done my research on movies too. So. So it's cool for as a native to look at and be like, yeah, that's how they would have dressed. That's how they would have done. You know, that's how they would have. That's how teepees would have looked. You know, we see the authenticity in it. And so it's cool to see Hollywood take that into account. You know what I mean? And uh, And that doesn't always happen. No. And so it's cool that you are there to to do that. Like, that's that's just that's so neat. Well, I can only imagine how much work it takes and how much effort it takes for a studio to put into making something authentic. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm Because like we said, it doesn't happen. Easiest way is to just pull as much generic stuff as you can and say, okay, we're close enough, you know, and that's kind of how things I feel like were done up to, I don't know what, maybe the mid early two thousands, maybe when they even later than even even later. I mean, honestly, this is probably one of the first movies prey where it feels you know, for as big of a, a production as it was, you know, and as giant of a franchise as it was for it to be authentic, mm-hmm. uh, you know, nothing wrong with the Lone Ranger, but you yeah, know, yeah, there was yeah. a silliness to it. You know, that was like, you know, it, there was, there was a comedy. Uh, to it was it. fun. It was a fun mm-hmm. movie, but and, you know, they, I mean, like it, obviously you had to like suspend some realities in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean like it, it, even earlier on, uh, I mean, one of the earlier movies I had done was, uh, into the West. And mm-hmm. it was good in, the, in in certain cases, uh, but that was when I personally found out that um, there was like a masculine and a feminine uh, to the Lakota language, and that um, the uh, the language advisor had told me like, oh well, you've seen Dances of Wolves, right? And I'm like, am I native? Yeah, I've already <laughs> I've seen Dances of Wolves. And he was like, well, they're speaking the feminine form of Lakota through the whole thing. And so, like, you know, you brought up uh, how, like, they had started speaking Lakota, trying to, uh, you know, use the language. But, like, it was still, you know, it was, like, half halfway there, almost there. And I feel like as we've progressed through through film um, and having more producers like yourself come into the whole situation and being able to have more of a dictate on like, okay, you're not doing this correctly. This is the way they look during this time period. Especially it's, with that producer credit. Like that's yeah. like I the buck when stops. when you do have a producer, a native producer, that's where like the more of the critical decisions, because you know, when people are at the table, if you don't have a native producer there or a native director, yeah. you know, if there's nobody native at that table, well, who's guaranteeing and making mm-hmm. those decisions yeah. and saying, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I mean, uh, there were plenty of times when I was like, no, <laughs> we're not doing this. And no, we don't <laughs> do that. You know, like in the original script, uh, they had a part where, um, like, she was shooting wood rats and she was going to eat wood rats. And I said, are you kidding me? I've, I'm, I've never seen a Comanche eat rats. And <laughs> yeah. I said, you're going to offend 20,000 mm-hmm. people and they're all going to come after you. Yeah. I said, I said, we're a noble part people. We're hunters, you know, we're mm-hmm. a culture. We don't really even eat fish. You know, you had to be a good hunter and you know, you, you ate, I mean, we had a protein based diet, you know, mm-hmm. of, of meat. And I said, so I said, why can't she shoot a rabbit? Yeah. And they were like, Oh, well, okay. 
You know, I mean, yeah. no one ever thought of that, right? And then yeah. you see her walking, and she shoots like six rabbits. Yeah. And she's got them all on her. Thing, and it tracks, it. and yeah. it makes sense. It's like so, wow. you know. Yeah. And I'm, we didn't offend anybody. And you know, I've never <laughs> seen any any of our people, or even through our stories, heard of anybody. Oh, we were so hungry, we had to eat rats. No, we didn't. You know, no. we might have eaten eaten a fish before that, but you know, like or you know, hunt <laughs> squirrels or hunt. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's all kind of things to hunt. So that's just like one little example. But you know, having a creative team that was it's like okay you know yeah. and, they, and they get well, it it shows that you had a hand in it i oh, mean it really I had does. two hands in it. are you kidding <laughs> <laughs> well uh we're gonna take another quick break um and um i think we're gonna try to maybe extend this conference because i've got a little couple more um questions still on, on that the line first question. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah no we're gonna um you know check us out on patreon we're gonna go a little bit longer with the audio and um yeah we will uh be right back thanks Hey guys, it's Elle. Just wanted to say thanks for uh, watching the show and uh, wanted to make sure that you guys remember to rate, review, and subscribe, all three. But now we're adding a fourth one, share. I want you to share it with your friends and family, all right? So again, thanks for checking us out. Hope you guys are enjoying the show and let's get back to it. All right, and we're back here with Jane Myers, and we just uh, got done with our uh, oh, we just got done with our uh, <laughs> our conversation on the Patreon, and we're yeah, you know, glad you if you joined us, uh, Justin. Shout out to you for being our first. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, we were having a great conversation. Uh, we talked a little bit more in depth about um, you know, uh, pray, uh, which of course uh, Jane was a producer on. And I don't um, know if we established that in the beginning. I don't <laughs> think. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we have alluded to it. We've never actually said it, but I'll yes, say it. we're saying it now. Yes, I was proud to be the producer. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, we, we were talking a little bit. Um, can you tell us a little bit? Um, maybe you know, was there anything s- specific for you during the production that really stood out to you, different from maybe your other projects? Yes, because um, this was a big studio production, so we had different, uh, I had like 330 people on our production, wow. and wow. so everybody yeah. had a job, and mm-hmm. when I'm used to working on independent productions, and as a producer, I do everything, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter, can you grab that, can you set up that camera, yes, can you, you know, go mm-hmm. get this tripod, oh, it was you... it Union? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I'll do it all, right, and I've line produced as well, so um I was more of a creative producer on this, which was really great for me being having an artist background and being a fine artist. I was like, oh, that's wonderful. Because uh, for the costume class, I mean costume class, for the costume department wardrobe, we would have class in the mornings. Mm -hmm. I would uh, go in and show them, this is how you cut buckskin. This is, and I made like color swatches of the different colors that we would use in the movie because at the time we used earth paints. So we had Mm -hmm. green, uh, we used coal for for black, we had white, yellow, and red. So we mm-hmm. actually used real earth paints to, you know, uh, to paint everything because oh, wow. uh, Dan wanted it, the native people to look kind of uh, as primitive as possible so we could show that contrast between the uh, French trappers coming in yeah. and them using metal as opposed to, you know, natives using flint and um, mm. and arrows and lances. So we just wanted to really show that contrast. So then I said, well, then it would be like an ac- absence of a lot of beadwork too. So, yeah. so we didn't have a lot of beadwork and we used things like elk teeth mm-hmm. and cowrie shells and horse hair, you know, that Comanches use. So it was really great because, uh, Stephanie Porter, and she worked on Free Guy, who was our costume designer. Okay. So yeah. she was really like, okay, show us what you think. And, oh, we had like, as big as your wall here, we just yeah. had it one big huge mood board with all these different. Well, you know, because things there's a huge show. difference between like powwow garb versus just everyday wear. Yeah. Yes. You know, and yes, and we it, needed stuff for every day for them because you have to remember, like Nadu has to have multiples. So yeah. that one outfit, we didn't just have one. Oh yeah. We yeah. had like <laughs> we had like twelve. Yeah. We had a dozen of those. So when you come up with the designs, and each character had to have their own design too, like each mm-hmm. each of the um, well everybody in there. So, but for the native people, we tried to, um, and even with makeup, we did the same coloring for the makeup. You know that people used. You know whether it's uh, a family 
type of paint, yeah. whether it's, a, you know, because I, I hated to say war paint because they weren't going to war right. because we used our paints to protect ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they wanted protection when they were going out on hunts. Mm -hmm. So that's why everybody had, you know, in, uh, different types of paint. And to reteach, you know, like people that do makeup, <laughs> you know, like yeah, makeup yeah. for a living, it, it's a whole different thing because they're like, well, we want this opaque. And I said, oh, no, they wouldn't yeah. be wearing it opaque because this is something that they would put on and maybe wear for a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, and then if it's applied with earth paint, then it cracks. And then it, you know, you know, it's not like a cream or a cream based mm -hmm. and yeah. just all of these things. So that was like a, a little teaching tool. But it was really nice because we had a really great makeup artist named Sam Rumball. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, now I get it. You could see when that light came on. Yeah. And then we just, uh, then the director and I would look at the end of the day at the different paints for the different people. <laughs> and we would, um, you know, we would have them. And you could see when somebody was wearing something that they felt confident in, you could see yeah. it in their spirit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we wanted them to have that that kind of sense of security. So we wanted them, well, do you like it? Because most yeah. of the time when you show up to a set, people put some, this is how yeah, he's supposed to look. they put it on you. And they put it on you, right? And yeah. then you're like. Oh, and if you don't feel good in it, you don't want to wear it. Yeah, yeah. and then you're like going, trying to do your part, like, oh, I look like a clown. How mm. am I going to do this? But, yeah. you know, but if it's something that you helped develop and that you like, then mm. it just shows in your character. And that's why I think another reason why we have such strong characters too. Because yeah. Because they all like their own war paint mm -hmm. and everything. And then it's so different because people have never seen that. And just like your poster, wherever that green poster is, mm -hmm. you know, then you see that with like the predator blood. Because yeah. if she would have killed the predator, of course, she would have taken the blood and, you know, yeah. marked yeah. herself with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then she comes back and she's wearing that predator blood. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. Did you ever in your life think you would see that? No, <laughs> it was so cool. I never, you know, I was like, ah, I helped develop that. Ah, I love it. <laughs> what is that like as an artist to see something on that big of a scale like it's great because you know as an artist you have it in your mind and i know you as a painter you can see it in in your mind mm -hmm. like i want it to look like this but then like to see it come to life in a movie you yeah. know and the and the broad audience that because like as an artist i'm not sure how many people have seen my artwork i can tell you how many people have looked on my website you know <laughs> yeah. it's nothing to the amount of people that have viewed this movie yeah it's nothing mm. so you know to know that i had a hand in help helping create this you know mm. all the way down to the costuming to the leggings to the to the uh, face paint of the different warriors, to the hairstyle, to the language. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, and if, you to know that, if you wouldn't have been involved, it would have been a completely different movie. It yeah. would have been totally different. But, yeah. you know, it was good because we had a small creative team. You know, so Dan, as a director, he knew what he wanted, but he was like, help me articulate this. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, make, I said, oh, that, and to me, that was like the easiest part, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, we can do this, just watch, you know, and that's, you know, because I've never had that big of a chance to like, just do that, you know, create that mm -hmm. whole look and to create the whole movie. And um, it's kind of interesting because when you make these kind of movies, uh, when they're action, and the studio's giving you millions of dollars to do this. They're like, what is it going to look like? Like, they <laughs> yeah, want to know, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And how do you bring something from someone's head? Now we do everything in previs, which is like a um, – because Disney has the best animation in the world. <laughs> so their department does like a whole previs of what the stunts look like oh, and what wow. Nadu's yeah. going to look like walking, what the fight's going to yeah. look oh, like. Wow. You know, so we were able to do that to show them. But then even that, they're not even in their right things yet. They're just mm -hmm. people like kind of – you know, showing you this is what the fight scene looks like. You know, yeah, just to as kinda, an artist, yeah. I could just imagine seeing that tech, like, just be yes. like, what can I make with this? Like, exactly. That's, yeah. that's cool. So I thought that was like, when I saw the previous, I immediately said, oh, uh, we're changing this, <laughs> we're changing that. I mean, but he, and Dan was like, just, just be quiet. You know, it's, it's just a previous, you know, this is just so we can show them what yeah. is, because they mm -hmm. have no idea. You yeah. know, you, I have this great idea. Please give me, you know, $75 million to right. do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, someone's not going to go, uh, okay, we're in a pandemic right now. We yeah. don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you this for what? <laughs> and I think also that's probably plays into the, idea or not the idea but the fact that we don't have a lot of uh indigenous based movies out right because studios like you said we said before they don't know how they're going to perform they don't know if they can take that risk right to put the money on on a production and say well, i don't know if it's going to perform right this is like you said has set a new standard right so going forward do you think we can expect to see more of these types of stories you know not necessarily you know just predator but more studios may be taking 
you know, more opportunities, more chances with, um, you know, indigenous stories going forward, you know? I definitely think so. Um, people say like, oh, this is a renaissance, but how is it a renaissance if we've never had it before? Yeah. yeah. You know, to me, it's kind of, it's like a beginning, I think, and yeah. we'll see a big change in native cinema and people are, you know, well, how come this never happened before? And I can tell you, I mean, like, it's really simple. We never had native directors, native writers, you know, mm -hmm. in with studios, native producers that can help get these projects made. Yeah. You know, people have mm -hmm. been advisors, cultural advisor, um, consultant. Yeah. You know, and consultants don't make the big decisions at the table. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, now that we have like the Sterling Harjos, you know, we have yeah. the Sydney Freelands, we have, you know, all of these people, Erica Tremblay, Black Horse Low, myself, um, Heather Ray, Bird Running Water, you know, we have like a, a team of people, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. Yeah. Need, you know, we need to triple that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we still have people that, you know, are at the forefront that can do this. And mm -hmm. that's why you see the big, the big movies, the big change. Cause yeah. I mean, just, I mean, Prey has, has proved that it can be done. That's awesome. Absolutely. Um, did you yeah. have, did, you have, did no, you have any more questions? How did I get into producing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I <got it. laughs> Actually, I think we're a, a little out of time at the moment for the YouTube version, but I yeah. think we're going to go ahead and uh, continue maybe this. Uh, yeah. I don't know if, if you're, if you're, yeah, if you're interested yeah. in talking just a little bit more, you sure. know, um, we've got a few more questions, but um, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening. And um, we want to thank our special guest, Jane. Um, Myers for being on the show today and um, yeah, giving us a little bit of an inside look into um, producing prey. Producing. Yeah. yeah, prey. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out right check now. It out. And if it's you've on... seen it, stream it again. Yeah, do, <laughs> yeah. do, do, do it again. Get those numbers. Yeah. Up, oh yeah, seriously. Yeah, the numbers have been phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, then we'll keep blow them up. Just blow it up. It, yeah. it has. It. You know, they make a they do a projection on what they wanted us to reach in 10 weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh we re we reached that plus more in 10 days wow oh, wow oh my goodness what our 10 week projection was yeah and they oh were just goodness. like uh <laughs> just and it's not a phenomenon like native people have that creative storytelling ability so we're natural storytellers oh, yeah. our, yeah. our histories are oral histories and i had brought that out earlier i was going to say because i was raised by my grandparents and my grandmother was raised by her grandparents mm -hmm. so i'm hearing like our stories that are five generations away from myself oh, wow. you know so think yeah. about that back in time it's yeah. like whoa okay so you know i can use those things yeah all right well go ahead take us out um yeah, so everyone remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and uh, share our video, and, uh, you know, share it with your friends and family and, and people, you know. You know the drill. You know, you know the drill. The drill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you again, Jane, for coming on, and um, everybody, we'll see you next week. Thank you.